Tiffany Micah podcast and welcome to today's episode. It's an awful feeling, isn't it? Getting nervous, feeling nervous, especially when you can't control your nerves. So do you ever feel like this? Do you ever feel worried about how you're going to play? You worry about what other people will think of you, like what your parents will think of you, your coach, your team, even the spectators, the people watching you. Do you um, are you concerned or worried about not? You don't want to play bad in front of other people. You don't want to lose. You don't want to make mistakes. You don't. You don't, you even don't feel ready. You don't want to let other people down, like people in your team. If you're a team player or you don't want to let yourself down if you're playing for yourself or other people, you don't want to fail, right? And there's in the sense of, you know, if you're trying out for uh, to qualify for something, you don't want to fail or playing to get into a particular team, right? There's, there's many, many times that we can get nervous and there's many, many times that I've been nervous too and... With when I played tennis as a junior, yeah, I was nervous all the time. I was nervous all the time. In golf, I'd learned a lot of strategies on how to deal with it, but in tennis especially, was you know I couldn't move. My body would freeze up. I just that was the hardest thing. Body would freeze up. I couldn't physically get to the ball. I would get so worked up. But the thing was, is if you hear that, like I couldn't move, my body would freeze up, I couldn't get to the ball, I was worried about all of these other things that I'd mentioned earlier, you know, like worrying about how you play and worrying about what other people thought and playing bad in front of other people and losing and making mistakes, all those types of things, where's the focus, Have a think about that while I'm just going to share this with you, okay? Where's the focus? If you're worried about those things, where's the focus? And I remember playing this particular match and I was, gee, I was late 20s then, so I was just tennis coaching, but I was still playing competitively, just in local tournaments around Sydney and and so on. And I was playing this match against this other coach and I always remember from that I got beaten <laughs> and I got beaten quite convincingly because I went through that whole thing and my body couldn't move, I froze up, I just physically couldn't get to the ball because I was so nervous. All right? I hadn't learned a lot of strategies then. And then there was a photo of me lying on the ground because I'd tripped over trying to get to a ball because my legs were so heavy they couldn't move and then when I finally got them to move I tripped over. And there was a photo of me lying on the ground and it was in the local paper And it was called Tiffany Down and Out. Oh, can you imagine how I felt? I was so humiliated. I was so embarrassed and I was so angry. But the thing, like I said, I was so nervous I couldn't move. And I was like, I'm not going to lose to this woman again. Because I used to play against her a lot in doubles. I was a really good doubles player. Doubles was a, a, a big strength of mine. But I always wanted to tackle the singles make sure that I became a better singles player. Even though I had given up on my dream at 20 of becoming a professional tennis player, I still wanted to play well when I learnt to love the sport again because I fell out of love with it for a number of years. But when I learnt to love it again and I got into tennis coaching and then in my late 20s I started to play competitions and so on again. So I had to come up against this woman again. And I was like, right, I'm not going to lose to her. I'm not going to be find myself in that same position. But guess what happened? I froze up. Again, I couldn't move. What was I worrying about? All the things that had happened the previous year, losing, looking like an idiot, that photo of me lying on the ground, down and out. 
And I was worried about all of those things. And guess what happened? All of a sudden, I had lost the first set 6-4 and I couldn't move to the ball. So I was lucky if she hit the ball to me. But I'd lost the first set 6-4. I was down 5-love, 40-love. I was only one, I was like match point away from losing. I was facing match point. And before I knew it, it felt like in the blink of an eye, guess what happened? I actually won that set 7-5 and then I won the following set 6-3. Why? Why did I do that? I had found a way to win. Now, I didn't have any strategies. I had no idea how I was going to work through these nerves, right? I was so nervous. I didn't want to look like an idiot. I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to lose. I wanted to win, but I was focused on what I didn't want, right? So what I had done in that moment was that I found a way to win. I found a way to change my focus. And I will tell you, even though it wasn't a professional tennis match, it felt like one. And it was the toughest match I had ever played in my life. And it was actually a semi-final into a particular local tournament here in, in Sydney years ago that, that, was, um, that was running. And it was quite prestigious to actually win the tournament. And it was a semi-final, and I'll tell you, it took everything out of me. It took absolutely everything that I had, all my nervous energy. It took all my brain power. It took me everything physically because I gave everything I had just to fight back. And the, after that match, I, and that was a three-set match, and then I had to back up and play the final. And you know what? I had nothing left. I had nothing left in the tank. I was, I was gone mentally and physically and I, I lost to a, a friend of mine and I actually, I actually let her win because I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I just, there was nothing in, I had achieved the goal that I wanted to achieve. I didn't want to lose to this, this other woman. I didn't mind losing to, to this friend of mine. I was happy to let her win. I was, uh, it wasn't as important to me that match. I didn't care after that. But like I said, I had nothing left. I couldn't refocus and give everything. But to me, it didn't matter about how I went in the final. I was a winner anyway. I was a winner in my eyes because I tackled that demon I was carrying. And the same thing happened when I played a, a golf tournament. I had to play this, go through this playing test for, for teaching. And I was had myself in such a state and I was just starting to learn strategies. So the strategies that I share with you now, I still didn't have in place, but I had some. And so what was happening was that I was hyperventilating. So I'd run off to the bathroom. I would be hyperventilating. I had diarrhea. I had to go to the toilet all the time. I must've gone about six times before I teed off in the first, uh, first round and and I'd only been playing golf for three years so I got down to scratch really quickly but I felt out of my depth and here I am 37 years of age and I was competing against guys young men 18 years of age who could hit the ball a mile and our first match of the day was an 18 hole match and then the second day we had to play 36 holes so I was so nervous, right? Like I was so nervous. I was hyperventilating. I'd run off to the bathroom. I'd have diarrhea and I'd be going, come on, Tiff, you can do this. You can do this. Come on. You can do this. And I was like, I don't know if I can get through this. It's like, come on, you can do this. So what did I focus on? This was different in this versus what happened in the tennis. I f and, and with the limited knowledge that I had, I focused on breathing, all I knew I could do was take deep breaths in between my game, in, in between my shots and kept talking to myself, come on, Tiff, just keep breathing, just keep breathing. I also focused on staying in control of my emotions so I didn't let myself go, oh, gosh, you know, I feel like this and I feel like that and I don't want to look like an idiot I'm so much older than everybody else. And da -da -da. I didn't worry about that. I was like, just keep breathing. Just keep breathing. The breathing helped help me stay in control of my emotions. And I just focused on what I had to do. I just focused on playing the best shot that I could play in each, each time that I stood over the ball. Very different 
from what happened in the beginning, wasn't it? And that was with the limited knowledge. But the thing is, is that I can't wave a magic wand over you and say, here you go, abracadabra, this is how we can overcome the nerves. I want you to understand that it's going to be a process. But I also want you to understand it's what you focus on. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you a couple of, um, actually four points on what you need to be focusing on. So if you are struggling right now with nerves and you're feeling like I used to feel in the tennis, right, freezing up, hyperventilating, can't move the body, all of that type of thing, here's some strategies to put into place now, okay? So number one, staying calm. How do you stay calm? You need to breathe, right? You need to breathe. You need to take deep, slow breaths. You keep talking, because come on, you can do this. You can do this. And focus on the skills, right? Focus on the skills. So number two, control what you can control. So you can't control your opponent. You can't control your team or the team that you're playing against. But the one thing that you can control is that you can control what you are doing. You can focus on the skills. You can focus on the breathing. All you want to do is try and get the best out of you that you can in that moment. Right, so control what you can control. Number three, have a routine that you can focus on. Routines, man, you'll see in an upcoming program that I'm I'm putting together. I'll t- I'm telling you, routines are magic. That made a massive difference to uh, to my golf career. Massive difference. Because when you focus on keeping a routine, you will find that you won't be as distracted because it's so easy to be distracted. So you need to make sure that you have a routine that you can focus on, okay? And number four, figure out how to overcome the obstacle. So right throughout the process of your game, you're going to be confronted with obstacles. You're going to be confronted with challenges, with difficulties. You're going to be confronted with opponents or team members. What you need to do is you need to keep working, figuring out how you're going to get around them. You can't just hope that it's going to work. It's going to be a process. So you've got to keep figuring out how can I overcome this obstacle that's put in front of me. And you need to be aware of what's going on in your game. So then you can keep going through. It's going to be trial and error. I said to you, like, with routines, that's magic. But figuring out how to overcome the obstacle, it's going to be trial and error. So if if you're playing tennis and you pass down the line and they keep reading that, okay, try cross court. Try lob. Try drop shot. Keep figuring out. Mix it up. Keep figuring out what's working for you. Figure out how to overcome it. Figure out what's in the way of your path. You've got to keep working towards that. Okay? So four things that you can focus on. One, staying calm. Two, control what you can control. Three, have a routine that you can focus on. And four, figuring out the how to overcome the obstacle. So there's plenty of other ways that we can do it, but I wanted to give you some really simple, practical solutions that you can implement right now so that you are working on overcoming your nerves, so that you can move your body, so that you can focus on something to make things happen for you. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'd love it if you could share with me what you like best about what you heard. If you've got friends that you know that would benefit from these episodes, I'd love it too if you could share these episodes with your friends. If you have 30 seconds to spare, I'd also appreciate a five-star review wherever you hear these episodes. So I would love you to dream big, believe in you, and go after your dreams. Have an awesome day. Take care. Talk soon. Bye-bye.